I want the swipe of my sword to get me power, not the swipe of my credit card. Hey all, it's Nim or Nimicree if you're feeling professional, and welcome to the YouTube video. Now today we're going to be reviewing Bless Unleashed. Bless Unleashed released yesterday, August 6th, 2021, on Steam. Uh, from what I understand, it actually was on consoles a little earlier than that. Uh, so I decided to pick it up. It is currently a free-to-play MMO with, of course, the ability to pay money if you so desire. And the, in the interest of full disclosure, I did buy the Ultimate Founders Pack. So the question we're going to answer is, what do the visual aspects look like? How's the combat? And finally, is it worth it? We also will cover any launch day issues because, as you know, with any M MMORPG, there are launch day issues. If you like this type of content, why not... Click subscribe, hit the notification bell, so that you stay up to date with all content that I produce. I do a lot of MMORPG stuff, and you can always find me on Twitch as well. We'll go over that later. But without further ado, let's get started with the review. It makes sense to start with the visual aspect because, well, you live in the world, you fight in the world, you craft in the world, you gather in the world. So let's start with the world. I happen to love the visual style of this because it's all European. And you start off and on an island where you have this almost Spanish, uh, Greece, Grecian theme. The Mediterranean would be, I guess, the best way to say it. And then you end up in an Italian villa, again, Mediterranean. And now I'm in one of the big cities. I am in Cazador, Cazador, uh, Carzacor. Ca there we go, Carzacor. Uh, Cazador, that's, that's the name of an enemy in Fallout 4, or Fallout uh, New Vegas. So, no, I'm in, I'm in Cars of Core, and as you can see, you got lions everywhere. It looks pretty good. I mean, could it pop a little bit more? Of course. You can always turn up the graphical fidelity. But we do must remember that this is an MMO, and I'm generally happy with this. I like the fact that there's wear and tear on the roof tiles. And one other little detail that I like, especially in more realistic fantasy settings. The stones are not completely uniform, which is really nice. And there's foliage growing, as you can see. So, in like a World of Warcraft, it has a, a more traditional fantasy style approach you might you may not see vines growing on the capitol building or on a big city which i think is a nice touch as you go out into the countryside you also see ruins and excavations and farms farms and homesteads honestly it's a very european mmo so if that's something that you're into then by all means the visual aesthetic is a thing but if you're looking for something crazy out there uh in the sense of like futuristic or sci-fi this is definitely not your game so, let's move on to our combat, and in order to do that, we're going to start off with a feature that I find to be very interesting, and that is a two-person trial. So, I'll meet up with you in the two-person trial. Alright, so in order to get to the two-person trial, you first have to hit Escape, and you go to Matchmaking, and we're going to do this one. We'll do uh, Holy Trial and Emperor, Emperor of Roots, and then we just hit Q, start the matchmaking. Okay, we started the matchmaking, let's accept, and it takes us into a two-person trial. Trial. Oh, looks like looks like somebody didn't. Oh no. Okay, somebody accepted. Perfect. And so what we do here is we actually fight in an arena, as opposed to not fighting in an arena. So let's just start here, or as opposed to running through a dungeon would be the more accurate way to say it. So they always show a little cutscene. I don't know if it's skippable, but it's very short. You know, it just walks in, walks out. Boom. We're out in the sands. It's hey guys, Nim cutting in here. I'm actually going to be putting an image on screen of a happy puppy to cover some racism that happened in the world chat. There's actually going to be a section of the video that covers the community and how toxic it is. With that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Time to fight! Let's do it. And the combos are built around your mouse inputs and your abilities. So I'm a little higher than this, obviously. And uh, so let's lock on and clock in until it's time to clock out. So she's st stunned. And I'm going to just pop my big hit off. And so we start off with boom. And as you can see, there's a mouse input on the screen saying, depending on what I want to do. Oh, uh, don't attack her while she's doing that. We'll bring out my shouts. So we're going to stand in the safe spot right here. So those actually really, really suck. Oh, looks like I ranked up my... my battle pass because of course there's a battle pass that's not a whole lot of damage so i'm not really all that worried about it let's uh just stun here and we charge up charge up Bop! come here attack me lady 
Damn. I got a time. I got a time to counter attacks. I haven't got it. But as you can see, the combat's fairly fluid. It's a little stilted, but I I tend to think of it like MMO Dark Souls. So I I I'm gonna. I'm a big fan of. Like I said, that's why I said I'm a big fan of that. Run away from those, and of course uh, we're gonna just pop that off. Boom. There you go. And while I say MMO Dark Souls, I say that it's deliberate, not that it's hard. I just want to clarify that. So that was the two-person trial, and that's a pretty good example of how combat in the game works. Obviously, if you're outside, in if you're in the world, enemies are going to be a little easier to kill. You're not going, they're not going to have as many abilities. Um, but yeah, it's it's honestly it's not that not that bad a deal. And of course, because every game has to have a battle pass, every game has to have a daily login tier system for something. Let's equip that while I can. I got a belt, nice. Uh, you, you, there's going to be reasons and upgrades to log in to do stuff every day. It's, it's essentially task-based gameplay. Now, some people like task-based gameplay. Uh, some people don't. So that's something there that we are going to, of course, figure out. Okay. Now, on to the questing. We're going to take a quick side note from the uh, questing point, which I was getting ready to make. I promise that's coming next. Uh, there is a point here that I, I want to mention that... The North American servers for this game are extremely toxic. I'm talking extremely toxic. So, if that is something that bothers you, I definitely would not play this game. That's something that can be a hard no because I just... I In the last segment I recorded, there's an image over where the text goes. Because there was some real, just racist shit going on in that chat. And as you can see now, it's not scrolling across my chat because I actually turned off the output. So let me show you how to do that. Go to global, right? You hit O. Oh, there it is. There you go. So not global, but uh, you go into, you go to all. So here we go. We got, so there's all. Then we hit uh, O. Boom. And I'm going to switch back to global just so it doesn't, it doesn't change. And I actually took general and global. I made it to no output. That way you don't actually have to see that on your screen unless you want to. Uh, and I've noticed, look, I'm, I'm a veteran of MMORPGs. I've played a lot of them. And some of these things are just like, holy Christ, dude, come on, man. Really? Do you really have to do that now? Uh, and of course, I can't control what people do. I'm not gonna, I'm not saying uh, I, sh I should be able to. It, actually, no, I am. I, I absolutely think you shouldn't be able to get away with putting racist shit in chat boxes. I, I yeah, yeah. Call me an SJW. Uh, call me, you know, I'm a social justice paladin. Whatever. But that's the thing I just wanted to mention, is that, that there's a lot of, I don't know if it's edgy jokes, but I don't have time for ironic racism. I just assume they're racists, and we're done. So, but now, for real, on to the quest. I just had to share that point, because here's the thing. What if you think about playing this, and you see that stuff, and you're like, well, thanks, Nim. Thanks for giving me the heads up that I was getting ready to step into a literal toxic waste dump. All right, on to the quests. So we're on to quests now, and the quests are pretty simple. It's pretty standard MMORPG fare. You're not going to run into anything crazy here. So, what do I mean by that? Meaning that you pick up, you see indicators on the map. For example, let's say this is the Farmer Pirlo. Uh, the Cursed Altar, search ca uh, Castor Magnus for the Skeletal Altar, and then of course there are other objectives, just it's not saying until you go through the steps of the quest. Once you would go pick that up, and a circle would appear around your map, and this is the area in which you do the quest. Do the quest, you sometimes turn in, sometimes it auto-completes. I will actually make special mention of regional quests, or world events as it were so if we look here we see that uh waiting for regional regional quest refresh so we can see that there are some that have spawned and some that haven't and those regional quests are essentially think of them as kind of mini random world events kill eight bugs heal nine sick horses gather seven sacks of grain and so on and so forth and it's thematically appropriate to the area that you're in we're in karzakor right now so that'll be something there. And uh, Cars Core is uh, it's essentially a kind of like an Italian region. If I were to if I were to go by architecture, style, and design, uh, of course there are special quests that are marked. As you can see, this is the Mark of the Wolf, where I complete defeat the Corrupted Treant, and then of course Camus. Uh, there are two places here where we should be able to see that. Yeah, this is I believe that Camus is down here, but that's uh, neither here nor there at this point in time. So th that's questing. It's pretty simple, pretty bog standard. There are quest hubs and. Uh, special note for travel, you'll notice these little uh, little wing points. The closer you are to one in-game, the cheaper it is to teleport to another one. But, 
you can teleport from the open world map. You may say, Nim, it says 500 gold there. Well, take a gander down to the bottom of my screen. I have 326,946 gold. Right, I haven't played but for about 8 hours. Now, I did buy, again, the uh, Ultimate Founders Pack, so that did give me a boost of gold and a few items. Uh, but not to the point where gold will probably not be a problem if you do the content. And again, as always, if you want to succeed in a game, do the content. So we've talked about PvE combat. We've talked about the visual aspect. We've talked about questing. Let's talk, and we did have a community warning. Let's talk about launch day issues and then answer the final question of, is it worth it? All right, before we get to launch day issues, let's talk about miscellaneous mechanics, and then we'll get to launch day issues and uh, all those other fun things. I will also be including monetization options in this, so if you're not a fan of hearing about monetization options, well, I mean, I gotta tell you, otherwise it would be reviewer malpractice, not. So first, let's talk about passive healing and soul fires. You'll notice that I am currently at 55% health. If I stand here for a few seconds, my health does not increase. I'm not in combat, I'm not being attacked, so there's no passive healing. Which means that in order to passively heal, so without, I, and what I mean by that is without using food or a potion or something like that, you have to go to a soul fire. Now, you can do a lot of things with soul fire. You can salvage items, you can cook. The warmth from the soul fire slowly restores my energy. Now, as you can see, it, it seems to be fairly fast for me. You know, I'm gaining, what, 6% every, every time? It's not a big deal. In fact, it's probably good. We have F6, it shows, okay, shows me there. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, let's, this, this ties into another point. Let's hit escape, and we're going to talk about the money, the monetization, the cash shop. What happens is, as you guys know, I disclosed earlier in the video, I bought the Ultimate Founders Edition. I do not recommend buying the Ultimate Founders Edition. I do not recommend buying the Medium Founders Edition, nor the Small Founders Edition, whatever the tiers are called. I don't recommend that. Um, this game is not worth it. Now, I will say, if this is your absolute 100% jam, like this is the thing that you have lived for, then okay. But unless you are a serious, hardcore fan, don't. Just don't. And I'm going to show you why. Now, I have premium benefits for 96 days. 90 days from the Ultimate Pass and uh, 6 days from the uh, linking my Steam account. So, what does this give me? gives me 50 Lumina every day. This increases my bag capacity by 50, increases my PvE experience gain by 50%, my PvE gold gain by 10%, my quest uh, skill XP by 10%, my HP recovery at soul powers by 300%, my gathering mining logging speed by 25, all of my crafting experience by 10%, I get a 5% marketplace fee discount, and a 40% discount on the purchase of general goods, merchant recovery potions. So, Here's the thing that I'm going to say about that, right? Look at all those benefits. Every single one of those is a monetized buff. And the reason it's a monetized buff is because the designers of the game decided to inject a grind and then sell you a solution. So, that's why it's I don't recommend buying the premium pass. Unless this is your real... I mean, like, this is the game that you can sit down and play. Like, for example, if you were a fan of Anthem, like, and that was your thing. Okay, no problem. I don't, I'm not hating. I'm just saying, as a reviewer, I cannot honestly recommend this. Because all of those individual buffs are pieced out and have a separate grind or something to slow you down to get you to open up your wallet so that you, so that you'll pay more. Be like, okay, well, I guess, uh... I guess, I guess, I guess I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta pay more. Here, here, take the money. You know, that's what they want. They want you to do that out of frustration. And me as a reviewer, I want you not to do that. So, just letting you know that there. Let's look at the cash shop before we go, and then we'll talk about the launch day issues. So, as you can see, there's a battle pass, as, as any, anything can say. So, I got, let's see, I got a recovery scroll and uh, artifact core pouch. Okay, great. We'll just uh, pick up both of those. Bam. Collect all. And I'm not mad at a battle pass. I'm not mad at even a premium battle pass. It It, it is what it is. Uh, do I think it's great? No. Of course, you can see what your missions are. So we'll just hit E. Go over to missions. There it is. Uh, and you can see obtain treasure chests, catch fish, uh, defeat elite monsters, jungle invasions, all that jazz. And, and you can see that each week has different stuff. 
Um, obviously starting with easier challenges, escalating to higher challenges. Seems the season is 26 to 26. I think the season might be 28 days. Uh, yesterday it said 26, but I don't know exactly. And uh, there have been some problems with the servers. So that's that. Let's look at the Lumina shop, because obviously there's a cash shop. Uh, it says I have 6,100 information. What is loyalty information? So these are my loyalty levels, which I can uh, get. So we have a bag, a thing, and a chest. And by spending money, you can actually gain so many things. Let's see, what is view details? 5,000 Lumina. So that's, that's, that's certainly one. Gold, chest, legendary, uh, star seed, card emote, and of course the prestige chimera. Nothing like prestige, nothing says prestige like buying it. After all, life is pay to win, and we play video games not to get away from life, right? Wink. Now, uh, as you can see, we've got our, our bundles, of course, which you can all pick up if you want. Consumables. So premium bless pass, right? Uh, unlo unlocks it, and then you can get the upgrade ticket if you want to. Bag expansion ticket increases your capacity. Ten of them. So ten slots permanently for seven for seven hundred. Uh, then of course you have your costumes and weapons. Uh, the Bunisher, Dauntless Armor. Of course, these are these are nice cosmetics. It would be good if they were able to be earned in game, but what are you gonna do? Right? You you gotta sell those cosmetics. And again, this is one of the things that if this doesn't bother you, that's fine. For me, eh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Because appearances are one of the easiest things to monetize. And while they don't increase player power, Fashion Fantasy 14 is a thing. Fashion Souls is a thing. Housing in Solo is a thing. Housing in Final Fantasy is a thing. So cosmetics matter. And if cosme cosmetics didn't matter, they wouldn't sell them to you. So again, I have to, as a reviewer, I have to tell you about this stuff because if I don't, it's a dereliction of duty. And people are like, man, well, who appointed you? Well, I appointed me. So that's why I'm doing it. I'm a guy with a camera on the internet. People will take me seriously. There, of course, is the Blue Buffalo. Golden Fleece Kid. Uh, these are cool balance. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, they look they look nice. Of course, limited, which uh, well, you can get. get uh, you can only buy a certain amount. Potions of Recovery. Uh, which will be interesting. White Teddy Bear Installation Kit. Holy. Uh, okay. Great. They got Christmas items already. Uh, it's August, but sure. Whatever. That seems like a, a little bit thing. Mileage. So if you want to get mileage, I don't I don't have any mileage yet. I don't even know how you, how you get it, but whatever. Uh, and then of course coupons. If you want, I have these as well as the Buffalo Blue Buffalo discount ticket. If I want to buy a token, uh, then you can input codes that you get, and of course your premium bag. So these are I got I was given a lot of different things uh, for buying the ultimate battle pass in addition to those buffs. So let's grab these. Oh, let's go back to my my premium bag here real quick while I'm there. I'm just going to use them. I'm just going to add my slots. Easy enough. Right. Boom. Slots have been added. Account storage capacity has increased. Uh, for accounts governed by Korean law, paid items. Uh, it's fine. I'm, this isn't governed by Korean law as far as I'm aware. As you can see, that is the microtransaction store. Uh, which can turn into a macro transaction store if you really, really wanted to. Seems the frame rate is stuttering a little bit. Uh, I can't imagine the servers are all that taxed, but what do I know? Now, let's talk about our final topic, which is launch day issues and is it worth it? So, the launch day issues, of course, uh, at the start of the game, the game launched at, uh, let's say... 11.40, I got, that's when I got the email saying it was live, people downloaded it. So by about noon, people were up and running. Because this game isn't all that, all that, uh, taxing on hardware. The servers aren't great. But as you can see, it looks a lot like Oblivion. Yeah, that's what I always get. It reminds me of Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Uh, not in a great way, but, but Elder Scrolls Oblivion, uh, in the aesthetic, and, and it's fine. Fine. But some of the servers were down. Some of the mechanics were still stilted. Apparently, a lot of the problems that this game had in previous releases under previous titles and previous teams have not been fixed. I don't know because I haven't actually played it. Uh, so I'm just giving you my opinion on what I saw in playing in about the eight hours I've played the game. And people may say, Nim, it, you can't judge an MMO in eight hours. You might be right. Uh, but here's the thing. How am I going to get to the end game if I can't get through the beginning and the middle game? We can call that the Final Fantasy A Realm Reborn problem. Because I remember after playing 
uh, ARR and getting to story, having 300 or so quests to do to get to Heaven's Ward. Now, don't get me wrong, in retrospect, uh, the story was great, but going through it felt like a slog, like I was playing here. You take this, okay, and I'll take, I'll take this. And then it's just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So if the game isn't fun to get to the end game, it doesn't matter how fun the end game is because nobody ever gets to the end game. I, I don't think that's rocket science, but then again, I'm not a math surgeon. I am, however, an engineer and a YouTuber. So that'll be something there. A little cool idle animation where it just zooms in and all that stuff. And, and again, I, I have no problem with the aesthetics. I, I like that. But the final question is, is it worth it? So the game is free to play. If you want an MMO to just kill some time, you know, that's not super serious and kind of action-y, yeah, absolutely worth it. I would say I would say it's play it as long as the servers are up, right? And, and there's a reason I, I, I say that because I have some friends in another game that were playing in the previous incarnation and they took the servers down. They, they had legendary pets and everything and they lost them because the servers were shut down. My other thing is, it's worth it if you don't invest in the game. So, play it, log on to it, spend the microtransaction currency they give you, don't buy any. Don't buy the passes, unless, of course, this is your real, like, oh my god, I've been waiting for this game forever to come to PC. If, if so, then that's something there. Play the game if you have some friends that you just want to mess around with. Maybe join a guild. Hell, maybe create one of your own. But ultimately, I cannot recommend this game beyond the free-to-play model. It's just not there. And I don't know how many more times you can release an IP to fail your states and it, st and it have any reasonable chance of succeeding. Because let's say this game gets shut down and they go with Bless Reforged or Bless Crucible or Bless A New Beginning or, or something like that. How many people are legitimately going to try it? More importantly, how many people would have tried this had there not been had there not been a free to play option, right? I I I have a title called Pyre. Boy. All right, so we go in here, uh, we go to titles, right? So I, I have a title here. I, I have a title called uh, Learning Ropes Pyreborn Adventure. So you get Pyre, you get Pyreborn. So that right there says it's been unlocked by 2.83 percent of all users. So let's say there were, you know, 10,000 people, right? So that's 283 people bought the game at the highest level. Now, I'm sure there's a, a little bit there. Uh, so I, I, I want to just throw that out there that if this weren't a free-to-play game, nobody would play it. And I, I, I'm an MMO streamer, RPG dude. So I don't mind taking a gamble every now and again. However, because of this, I'm probably not going to gamble on Lost Ark. I have it, but I'm probably not going to try out their big package. Now, if they want to send me something, that's a different story. But I, I don't like wasting money. And this, I have very few regrets in gaming. Buying the Ultimate Founders Edition of this is one of them. Now, to wrap up, I do want to say, guys... Uh, this negative, I, this review, I tried to come from the most objective and and not overly critical, or at least I wanted to be helpful construction, not destructive criticism. So hopefully that you got, you saw that and got through to it. I won't disguise how I feel about the game, especially the monetization options. I feel they're very, very excessive uh, to the point of the hampering of the game. And I know they want to recoup costs, but here's the thing: if if nobody's playing your game, then you're not getting any money. Nobody's in your economy, and since you don't have a sub fee, no one's in your economy. You don't make any money. So you have to draw that balance. And I would hope that they would be friendly enough to the players to give them things to keep them in the game and have bonus holidays and weekends and such like that. Like double Lumia earns and such and, and things like that. But make it earned through gameplay, not through purchase. Uh, I want to get I want the swipe of my sword to get me power, not the swipe of my credit card. Now, that being said, if you enjoyed this video, why don't you hit uh, subscribe on the YouTube channel? You can also hit the bell for all notifications. The other thing I'm going to say is you can follow me at Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Nimicry. That's N-I-M-I-C-R-Y. You also can find me on Twitch. And that's twitch.tv slash Nimicry. I stream Friday through Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time starting. We're having a great time there. I want to thank all my friends and Patreons to help with this. And speaking of Patreon, for you immortal heroes, there is, of course, uh, a Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Nimicry. You can suggest videos and get exclusive access. 
I had fun making this this video, and believe me, this is the more positive version after I spent some more time playing the game and it getting more fluid. Yeah, I know, adventurer. I'm a little disheartened about it, too. The animation was doing that. But anyways, guys, I had fun with this, so I hope you did, too. I'll take care, and I'll see you in the next video.